What's up guys, Jesse here. So I feel like I've kind of got this streak going on of just talking about the most boring things ever. Like a couple weeks ago, I talked about a chair and the latest installment of that is this keyboard over here, the iQnix F96 Cat. So if you guys weren't aware, there's this whole culture around custom mechanical keyboards that's been gaining more and more traction over the past couple of years where you can customize everything about the keyboard from the keycaps, the switches, case material, and the amount of combinations that you can get with all of those is pretty much infinite. And the reason I'm bringing that up is not because I think the F96 is going to be replacing a good custom board, but I think it's a good in-between step for someone who has maybe thought about dabbling in that community, but isn't really willing to do the research as well as spend the considerable amount of time and money required for a custom build, which is pretty much exactly where I'm coming from. I enjoy watching videos other YouTubers make about building keyboards. Keyboard typing ASMR is one of my guilty pleasures, but the whole group buying process and the research and buying all the tools and equipment required for a build is just a little bit too much for me, at least for right now. And that's where the F96 comes in because it's a ready-made board that you can buy right now, starting at $190, going up to $230, just based on how you option it, which I know is pretty expensive, but I think it's still within the realm of reason for a high-quality mechanical board. Like, if you were to look at the offerings from Corsair, Razer, or Logitech, you could easily find something that was in the same price range. But what I think really sets the F96 apart from those, though, is that while those focus mostly on gaming features like RGB lighting effects, fast response times, and things like that, the F96 focuses more on the sound and, to a certain extent, the feel. And I'll just say it right now, if you've only ever tried those gaming mechanical keyboards, you're missing out. Like literally from the second I took it out of the box, I could already tell that this was just at a completely different level than something like my Razer Huntsman Elite. Just the sheer weight of this thing gives you the sense that this thing is very well built. It comes in at about 1060 grams, which is actually lighter than the Huntsman that I just mentioned, but it's not really a fair comparison just because the Huntsman is a full size while this is a 96% layout. But in terms of density, the F96 definitely feels much more substantial. And I think most of that weight is just from the case material, which is just five pieces of solid, thick, anodized aluminum. Basically, the four pieces on the side screw together a little like a picture frame with the back plate on the bottom. And honestly, this thing is built like a brick, no flex anywhere whatsoever, and I really have no complaints about the build. This version of the F96 also has the Cat Alpha keycaps, which are, I think, considered pretty good even among the enthusiast crowd, but I could be wrong, so let me know if I am. But basically, they have this unique rounded geometry to them, as well as thicker sidewalls that just lead to better sound and feel overall. And if you try to buy some Cat Alpha keycaps on your own separately, then they'll run you about $100, so it's pretty cool that they don't charge any extra over the other versions of the F96. They're also made out of PPT plastic, which if you didn't know, there's two main types of plastic, ABS and PBT, and PBT is generally known as the higher quality out of the two. The lettering is put on there using a dye sublimation process, so you really shouldn't have to ever worry about them just rubbing off. I'm just a little bit disappointed though that the cat keycaps only come in this white version, which I mean, I don't think it looks bad or anything, it's just that the F96 comes in a lot of other really fun colorways, and it would have been really nice to be able to try those out without having to sacrifice the cat keycaps. Also, you can spec this out to have RGB backlight but none of the keycap options have shine through lettering, so if you plan on using this late at night, you're gonna need some ambient lighting or get an LED light bar like I did. So as far as switches in here go, I've got the Cherry MX Reds, which are a linear switch, meaning no tactile bump or click of any kind, but you can also choose between a bunch of other Cherry switch options if you're not into that. With the Reds though, I actually really like the way that they feel, although if I do have to give some criticism, I feel like they are a tiny bit scratchy. The stabilizers also feel pretty good, and as a total total amateur in this area, I can't really find anything to complain about. Now I'm sure you're dying to hear it at this point, so here is the sound test so you have a better idea of how it sounds. Again, this is the iQnix F96 Cat with Cherry MX Reds.
Okay, so now that you guys have heard it, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And please don't roast me too hard for my horrible, horrible typing form. I just never really learned to do it properly and it's kind of a bad habit at this point. Anyways, back to the keyboard though, I think it actually does sound a bit better in person than it does through the video. And I really don't know enough about audio engineering to be able to make it sound true to life. But in real life, it does sound a lot better and it's a world of difference from something like the Razer or Corsair offerings. The only thing I did notice though is that if you hit a key kind of harder, then there's this metallic reverb sound that isn't the best. It's very subtle though, and I'm honestly not even sure if you can hear it in the recording, but it's definitely there. Overall though, it's not too bad, and for a pre-built board, I was really impressed. Typing on this is also very enjoyable. It has this very subtle tilt to it that's provided by the keycaps as well as the two feet on the bottom that are not adjustable but are made out of solid aluminum and rubber and do a good job at keeping the board in place. The board is a bit thick though, so you're gonna need to hover your wrist while typing, but I found it to be perfectly fine, and hovering your wrist is technically the proper ergonomic way to type anyways. Now, going Going back to the back, you may notice this big black rectangle on it that says Bluetooth. And you guessed it, it's for the Bluetooth 4.0 antennas because those Bluetooth signals just can't get through the thick aluminum shell. You can connect it to up to three devices and switch between them by pressing the function button, followed by one, two, or three. The connection is rock solid and I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and switching between devices is as seamless as you could ever want it to be. There's also no perceptible latency, at least for someone like me who's not a pro gamer and of course because it's wireless it has a built-in battery that's what that huge hump on the back is for it's a 4000 milliamp hour battery which is charged up via the USB-C port on the side which can also be used for a wired connection to a computer all you have to do is switch that switch on the back which I think is actually the only cheap feeling part of this whole board but the battery life seems to be pretty good I've had it for a little bit over a week at this point and after the initial charge I haven't had to plug it in yet. From what I can tell, it's at about 60% now, and you can check the battery percentage by pressing the function button and then the X, and a light in between the G and the H keys will flash between one and three times to let you know how much battery is left. Now, as far as the actual usage of this goes, you may have noticed that the layout is a little bit different than the standard 10 keyless or full-size layouts. This is what's called a 96% layout, as the name of the board suggests. And basically, the whole idea is that you still get a numpad, but in a form factor that's only a little bit bigger than a standard 10 keyless. Which is great because I used to be an accounting student and having a numpad is an absolute necessity. And personally, I really like how it gives it this boxy look to it without any gaps in the keys. But there are some things to get used to it. When I use the numpad, I have to remember that the zero is now the same size as a normal key and I have to move my thumb from where I would usually have it. The right shift key is a little bit shorter than a normal one and that definitely took some getting used to. And the arrow keys are now surrounded by other keys, so it's a little bit harder to find without looking. Like before, I would just look for the empty spaces and then go to the arrow keys. But now I always have to look down to actually find where they are. Now, none of these are really that big of a deal, and I got used to it pretty fast, but still something I thought I should mention. This keyboard also works for both Mac and PC. All you have to do is press the function button and then hold down A for Mac or I for Windows until the light in the middle of the G and H keys lights up. Which is great for someone like me who who has kind of a hybrid setup going on and uses both. But if you're someone who just uses Mac, they actually include extra keycaps just for that. And all you have to do is use the included keycap puller to put those on. But for someone like me who switches between Mac and PC a lot, it does take about five seconds for the layouts to switch over, which does feel a little bit long. Not a big deal, but I wish it was closer to like three seconds or even better, just a hotkey shortcut. I also wish this had some dedicated media keys because that's the one thing that I really miss about my razor board and there are some keyboard shortcuts for play and pause volume up and down that sort of thing but they don't work in mac mode and by the way there are just a ton of other keyboard shortcuts that i didn't mention and they're just way too many to remember so i just keep the manual under my desk mat just in case i need to reference it but i mean those are pretty much my only complaints about this board and overall i am just in love with it now if you're somebody who's already in that world of custom mechanical keyboards then you might not find this that appealing. But if you're someone like me who has only really had experience with 
Razer, Corsair, or Logitech keyboards, then I feel like you should really give this a shot. The build quality, feel, and sound are just on a different level, and personally, I find it to be better looking than those other ones. And the ability to switch between devices and operating systems, along with including a numpad, just gives this so much real-world functionality, and I really cannot recommend this enough. So if you're in the market for a premium mechanical keyboard, and you don't want to build it yourself, Maybe think about checking this one out instead of what those other major gaming manufacturers are offering. Anyways, that's just my take. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Remember to smash that like button, and if you enjoy content like this, think about subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!